Hello internet, it is I, the Malik Aaron Aaron, and welcome back to Box Office Predictions. Today we're going to be talking about The Boogeyman. So as usual, we're going to be going over the pros and cons, so let's get to it. Pros! This is the latest Stephen King adaptation, and there's so many of those that I can't even count them, but it's pointless to even count. So, uh, Stephen King. Hopefully, there, there's Stephen King, if you didn't know what he looked like. Hopefully, they should all be here, or if they're not all here, at least the important ones are. Yeah, okay. So, Stephen King adaptations. There's so many of them. Let's just... I'm going to cherry pick all the successful ones, all the well-known ones. Carrie, The Shining, classics, absolute classics. Uh, some of the rest of these, I think, are labeled classics. I don't know exactly. Um, I know, well, Maximum Overdrive is a different type of classic. Not exactly the good kind. <laughs> it's more of a cult classic. Yeah, Stan... Stand by? That's a Stephen... Huh. Apparently Stand By Me is a Stephen King adaptation. I didn't even know that. <laughs> the more you know, right? <laughs> Did not know that at all. Okay. Um, Running Man. I know that's a classic. And I'm not sure if it's like legitimate classic or cult classic. I don't know. Pet Cemetery. That was a hit. Definitely. Misery was a big hit. I mean, that was Kathy Bates, the performance of her career. Definitely. I believe, yeah, she, I'm pretty, yeah, she definitely won the Oscar for that movie. Sleepwalkers is definitely a cult classic. That movie is fucking madness. <laughs> I'll, I've only think, I've only watched that movie, well, I didn't watch it, watch it. I watched a review of Chris Stuckman, like, he made a review of it, and I watched him that review and damn that movie is wild <laughs> uh, it's i think it's i think it might be a movie i should watch eventually because it's just that ridiculous there's shawshank redemption that's a legitimate classic even though it didn't do well when it first came out it eventually found an audience home media and now it's a oh a big old classic green mile Big one. That was like the biggest Stephen King movie for like a long time. And then after that, things kind of just fell off. <laughs> I mean, 1408 did pretty darn good. But yeah, things really fell off until It, or It Chapter 1. That changed everything. That was a game changer for September movies, for horror movies, for Stephen King movies. That movie did stupid well. <laughs> Oh, it opened with like 120 million, made like 300 million plus domestically, 700 million worldwide, which is enormous for a horror movie. So, yeah. And, and then you got It Chapter 2, which didn't do as well, but still made a lot of money at the end of the day. A lot for a horror movie. So, yeah, the It movies are easily the biggest, by far and away, the biggest out of all the Stephen King movies. And then Pet Cemetery from 2019, that did all right. So yeah, Stephen King movies, you know, if they're well made and people care about them, then they can do really well. The It movies are a prime example of that. So yeah, and plus Stephen King is just an iconic, iconic name in general. Like he's like one of the probably like the main guy when you think of like horror literature. <laughs> Because he's made so much. He's written so much. And so much of it has been adapted to film and TV. It's crazy. So yeah. I'd say the Stephen King name is a pro here. Although a decent amount of his stuff has have been flops. I will go over that when we get to the cons. But overall the Stephen King name I say is a pro. Another pro is that there's no direct competition for this movie i mean the last horror movie that came out was evil dead rise and that's pretty much out of theaters at this point so there's really nothing right now i mean there's stuff coming out in two weeks time there's the blackening but that's more of like a horror comedy than just a straight up horror movie 
but the, the next straight up horror movie will be Insidious the Red Door, but not that's not till July. So this movie has time to play out. And sure, there is a bunch of movies out right now, but when it comes to direct competition, there's nothing. So yeah, I'm labeling that as a pro. Um I guess uh sorry. I hate doing this so late. It's because my stupid yawn. I can't help it. <laughs> it sucks. But yeah, so this movie is actually kind of interesting. This movie like it All right. I have to look it up here off screen. Because I didn't know this <laughs> until, like, today. Literally, literally, like, a few minutes ago when I was doing a little bit of research. This movie was announced in 2018. Then it got canceled in 2019 because of the Disney acquisition of Fox. But then it was revived in 2021. That was supposed to go to Hulu. But then, like, last year, they decided to make it theatrical because of positive test screenings. Basically, what happened... With Smile and Evil Dead Rise, how Smile was supposed to go to was supposed to go to Paramount Plus, but then it was made theatrical, and Evil Dead Rise was supposed to go to HBO Max, that was theatrical. In both of those cases, those were fantastic decisions because both of those movies made a good amount of money. Smile particularly made a nice amount of money. So, yeah, the fact that this was saved from the <laughs> you know the streaming fate i would label that as a pro definitely so yeah i think that's it for pros okay all right this next part i'm not labeling as a pro or a con it's more of a middle ground thing and that's the overall reception for this movie because it's very much mid across the board <laughs> Um, I'm on Rotten Tomatoes now. Its critic score is at 60%, which is literally just right. Like, it just, it's, it's going to take one more negative review for that fresh score to go rotten. <laughs> like, by 1%. That's all it takes. So, yeah, the 60%, I don't think that's a positive or a negative. Audience score is literally a 63%, which <laughs> seems really terrible because... Like, ideally, an audience score should be, like, 80 to 90% or higher. 60%, ooh, <laughs> that's a sign of really bad word of mouth. Although, cinema score, it, its cinema score is a B-, minus, which is actually better than average. Slightly better than average for a horror movie. A lot of horror movies fall into, like, the C range. So, it's a bit above that. And, let me see. Smile got a B minus, which is kind of weird. <laughs> but uh trying to see, what did Black Phone get? Black phone where phone that was a B plus. Hmm. Weird. Cinema score is very weird when it comes to horror movies. <laughs> but um and Megan got a B. Again, cinema score is weird before. <laughs> but it's it's cinema score isn't like terrible for the genre. But it's not great either. So overall reaction is very mid. And I'm labeling so I'm labeling that as middle ground appropriately enough. Now for actual cons, uh Stephen King, let's go back to him. <laughs> oh, I mentioned it, the successes. Now I got to talk about the failures. It's only fair. I mean, last year you had Firestarter, which was an absolute non-starter. <laughs> Made no money at all. Uh, Doctor Sleep in 2019. I thought that movie was going to be a hit. I thought for sure it would be a hit. And it completely tanked. And I was kind of shocked. <laughs> I was really surprised. I'm like, this is the sequel to The Shining. Like, nobody cares. Like, what happened? <laughs> yeah, like, the the failure of Dr. Sleep kind of baffles me. But, yeah, it was definitely a huge, big old disappointment uh, box office-wise. Same goes for Dark Tower. I know that movie kind of 
I heard the movie was like very much like chopped up in the editing room and it kind of turned out to be an absolute mess. And the movie just didn't do all that well. <laughs> it was a, a just a bleh, a very bleh performance. And then Carrie 2013 did okay-ish, but didn't do great. The Mist also, I think, did okay-ish. Secret Window, same thing. Dreamcatcher did not do okay-ish. That did just straight up bad. The Rage Carry 2, which wasn't even like... That wasn't even supposed to be Carry 2. It was supposed to be a different movie. And then they changed it to Carry 2. I don't know why. It's so weird. <laughs> I don't get why some sequel... Like, you know, a lot of shows... I believe with Velma, people were just like... This show just feels like it was supposed to be something else, but then they decided to just tack the Scooby-Doo IP on it to sell it. That's literally what the Rage Carry 2 is. They had an original movie, and they just tacked on Carry, and they're like, boom, Carry 2. <laughs> That's literally what they did. It's it's terrible. It's so just, ugh, puts a bad taste in my mouth. But then, like, everything else here, I mean, a lot of these movies are so old, like, I don't think they really matter in, like, the the modern era. Like, literally decades old, a lot of these movies. But yeah, Stephen King movies, have a vi- they're very inconsistent when it comes to success. So, yeah, I'm labeling that as a con. Another con is is that overall, like, no one's talking about this movie, like, at all. It doesn't help that all the talk right now is about Across the Spider-Verse, for good reason, because that movie's fucking awesome. But, um, yeah, all the talk is around Spider-Verse. Nobody cares about the Boogeyman. I thought maybe it would be, like, decent counter-programming, but then, like, the hype just never happened. It just, it just didn't. And, yeah, I mean, not to mention there's a bunch of movies that are out right now. That's, you know, like, Little Mermaid, Guardians 3 is still, still has a pulse. Fast X kind of has a pulse. Uh, so, yeah, you have all those movies. Not to mention all the movies coming out in the f- near future. Transformers Rise of the Beast. Elemental, Flash, Blackening, No Hard Feelings, Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny. Like, so many movies that are going to take away this movie's screens and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> There's a, just a lot of just general competition everywhere. Just So, that's definitely a con in my book. Uh, Trying to think of another con. Oh, uh, it's preview numbers. It, they're not here, but its preview numbers were 1.1 million, which is really weak <laughs> compared to like other horror movies, like for comparison's sake. Uh, definitely not comparing it to Across the Spider-Verse. I don't even know why that's a comparison. Let's compare it to Megan from earlier this year. Another original. Well, that, well Boogeyman's not original. This is original. Megan, that had a preview number of 2.75 million. That was in January, by the way. January is a far worse month than June when it comes to box office. And this made like, like over like two and a half times as much in previews. So, oof. And then it, it just gets worse. <laughs> Smile. From uh, last year. Uh, Smile. The big horror movie of last year. That had a preview number of 2 million. So. Again. like pretty Nearly doubling the boogeyman. That was like 22 million. Megan was the 30 million. Yeah 30 million. Let's see. What else can I use? Black phone. Yes. Black phone. From last year. Last June. And I had a preview of 3 million. So. 
is really not looking good. <laughs> and then for the heck of it, Evil Dead Rise. Let's just throw that in there. <laughs> okay. Uh, Evil Dead Rise. The last horror movie that came out. That had a preview number of 2.5 million. So, as you can see, the Boogeyman does not... You know, compared to the rest of these, the comparison's not great. <laughs> it's not looking good at all. Like, the lowest is Smile, and even though that's nearly doubling Boogeyman's <laughs> preview number. So, yeah. Things are not uh, ideal for the Boogeyman. So, yeah, it's preview number. I would label it as kind of weak. So, that's definitely a con. But one pro that I forgot to mention is the fact that this movie, it had like a weird, really weird <laughs> um, road to the big screen. And I have it like off screen, just like uh, its whole road. So this movie was announced in 2018. Then it got canceled in 2019 because of the whole Disney acquisition of Fox, that whole thing. Then it got revived in 2021. Then it was supposed to go to Hulu. But then after positive test screenings, they said, no, we are <laughs> we are putting it in theaters. Literally what happened with Smile and Paramount Plus, what happened with uh, Evil Dead Rise and HBO Max, or I'm sorry, Max, now called Max, where those movies, were, those movies were destined for streaming, but were saved, made theatrical, and made money. This is not going to be <laughs> on the same level as those two movies. Definitely not. But... At least it has a chance to not be for you know at least it won't be forgotten as fast. <laughs> so yeah, I guess I'd label that as a con kind of uh, a pro. My bad. That that's a pro. But yeah, I think that's it. There's nothing else to say. So opening weekend, I thought this would open between like fifteen to twenty million. I I don't think that's gonna happen anymore. <laughs> Ten million like. 10 million seems ideal it seems realistic although i wouldn't be surprised if it fell under that a bit but i'm gonna go with 10 million just solid 10 million and it's total pff, i don't know 20 30 million total which isn't great considering the movie costs like 35 million dollars it's not here but apparently it's 35 million so uh <laughs> So, yeah. So that was the boogeyman. And now it's time to talk about the movie that, you know, people actually care about. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. That will be the next video. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, that's it. That's all. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, turn notifications, share the whole drill. Want to check out more videos like this. I got playlists on the homepage, all previous. Um prediction videos i made on the channel want to watch any of the ones i've done this year or the past few years you can go right ahead there's also the canceled series where i go over all the movies that were supposed to come out but didn't i covered the boogeyman once like one time yes one time it was episode 172 i talked about it alongside air candidar and white bird oh wonder story that's when I announced, like, it's, you know, release date. So, yeah, I talked about it there. So, if you want to watch that episode or any other ones I've done, there's, like, 192. Yes, 192 up to this point. So, if you want to watch any of the past, you know, cancel. So you want to watch them all from beginning to now. I highly encourage you to do that. So, go do it. There's also box office recaps where I go over the box office results for any particular month. May recap will come out next week. Very positive it'll be next week. There's a lot to discuss because May was weird-ish. There wasn't exactly like a runaway hit in May, but there is a lot of stuff to talk about in May. So not all of it is good. <laughs> a good amount of it isn't good, but it will be interesting. So stay tuned for that video. But, but yeah, if you want to watch any of the past uh, recap videos I made on the channel, you can go right ahead. And yeah, that's it. That's all. I am out. Goodbye.